out there. Peabody and Sherman here. Anyone for Tennyson? Who's Tennyson, Mr. Peabody? The brilliant poet who wrote The Charge of the Light Brigade. Are we going to visit Mr. Tennyson today? Well, no. I thought we'd visit the Light Brigade. We set the way back for Balaclava, a small port in the Crimea, in the year 1854. At that time, the Russian army had the British forces under heavy siege. We arrived on the scene just as Lord Cardigan, sitting astride his magnificent British horse, raised his sword to signal the advance. Oh, boy, Mr. Peabody, we're just in time to see the Light Brigade charge. You are laboring under a misapprehension, Sherman, for if you'll notice, the brigade is lighter than usual. You're right, Mr. Peabody, the horses are there, but there's nobody on them. It was imperative that Lord Cardigan be informed of this fact. Brigadiers! Stop! Stop! What do you mean, stop out of the way? We're going to charge. If you charge, your lordship, you'll be charging alone. A quick glance to the rear told the story. Good lord, they've done it again. Done what again? Where are they? They've all taken weekend leave for a month. But someone's got to get them back here. That is an impossible task. Not for Mr. Peabody, it isn't. Sherman's well-founded hero worship of me had done it again. Here is a list showing where each man is spending his leave. Uh, how many men are there? Six. I thought there were 600. Oh, no, there's only six. That's why it was called the Light Brigade. The first two men on the list were Private Higginbottom and Corporal McChesney, and they had a weakness for Chinese food. The nearest Chinese restaurant, of course, was in Hong Kong. And that's where we found them, inside Ed Fu Young's chop suey. You've got to get back to the post immediately. Can't do it, lady. No, we got 15 more courses of food coming, and we ain't going to leave till we get some. 15 more courses? That'll take forever, Mr. Peabody. No, it won't. Hand me that fortune cookie. I inserted a substitute fortune into the cookie, and when it was opened... The food has been poisoned. Signed, a friend. Gore, blimey. We better get back to the blanking post and have our stomachs pumped. That takes care of numbers one and two. Next, Sergeant Clappingstone. Where is he? The city of Sebastopol. In, of all things, a circus. It seemed the good sergeant came from a family of circus performers, and in his off time, he picked up a few extra rubles as a human cannonball. There he is now, Mr. Peabody, climbing into the mouth of that cannon. Excellent. He'll be back at the post in no time. All I had to do was charge the cannon with a little extra gunpowder, aim it in the direction of Balaclava, and the departure came off right on schedule. The next two names on the list were Lieutenant Faversham and Captain Trippingwell. We came across them on a tennis court in Rangoon, India. If they are that engrossed in the game, we'll get them back without their even knowing it. I took one end of the net, Sherman took the other, and we headed for the railway terminal with a match still in progress. I'm sure the citizens of India had never seen the 515 for Balaclava depart with a tennis match high atop the caboose. Only one more to go, Mr. Peabody. Yes, but that last one was a dilly. He was Colonel Fotheringay, or should I say patient Fotheringay, for it was in a hospital in Odessa that we found him. You'll have to be very quiet. The Colonel has been stricken with severe pains in the chest. He can't be moved under any condition. Hmm. Mind if I see the x-rays? Not at all. Here. Close examination revealed something that only my keen eye detected. I can have him on his feet in 30 seconds. Prepare the operating room immediately. But, Mr. Peabody, you're not going to operate, are you? Sherman, by now you should know that I am one of the smoothest operators there is. Scissors, please. There, it's done. Amazing, sir! Amazing! The pain is gone! What did you do? I simply removed the metal from your tunic. Whoever pinned it on pinned it rather deeply. Hey, Jove! I feel so good I shall return to the post immediately! Thus it was that all the men were present and accounted for when it came time for the Light Brigade to charge. Brigadiers! Charge! Oh, how thrilling, Mr. Peabody! Not only thrilling, it helped end the war in the Crimea. Then the British became their friends? Well, not exactly. You see, following the war, the Crimeans borrowed a large sum of money from the British. Don't tell me they didn't pay them back. Well, that goes without saying, Sherman. Everybody knows that Crimea doesn't... Pay. Hey.